Okay, so welcome to day two of the hottest conference of 2020. Uh, we hope you're enjoying things so far. Uh, we're looking forward to actually seeing you all in person and being able to go out uh, to the pub afterwards. But for now, this will be our substitute. So our first speaker today is Valeria Azeev uh, from JetBrains Research and the Higher School of Economics, which is, I guess, where they apply higher category theory to economics. That's the only <laughs> interpretation I can make of that. And his title is Index Type Theories. Go ahead. Uh, um, thanks for having me this conference. So um, let me talk about this uh, kind of theory that um, uh, there is a paper, if you're interested, uh, published recently about this with the same title. So you can uh, look at it if you're interested in more details. So um, first of all, let me talk about the motivation for this work. Um, so, uh, first of all, we can think about uh, multiple type theory as an internal language of certain infinity categories uh, with a lot of structure, like finite limits, finite limits, uh, the local Cartesian closed, the object classifiers, and so on and so on, right? Um, but what if we want to use HOT to the same language to reason about infinity categories without all the structures? So, for example, an arbitrary infinity category or infinity category which has only finite limits. Well, um, we kind of can do this uh, if we just restrict our multiply theory and just take a version where we have only adjacent types and uh, sigma types and unit types, then we'll get a uh, theory which uh, is an internal language of uh, finitely complete infinity categories, but even then it has certain limitations that uh, I'll talk about later in this talk. Another uh, problem is that we might want to talk about non kind of elementary um, constructions like uh, infinite uh, limits and limits. Of course, we can do this in ordinary code because it's kind of web design elementary. So uh, we can talk only about kind of internal version of these constructions. So um, and another example is home spaces. Its internal version is, of course, function types, but uh, we might actually want to talk about the external version because uh, us usually external versions are weaker than internal ones, and we actually might need this weaker version for some uh, reason. Um, so we can fix all of this uh, kind of problems uh, in indexed type theory. Uh, so. Uh, if ordinary homotopy type theory is internal language of um, infinity categories, then indexed uh, type theory is internal language of indexed categories. So what are indexed infinity categories? Uh, well, um, they are just functors, contravariant functors from some fixed uh, category, infinity category B, to the infinity category of infinity categories. And uh, in this talk, I will say category for infinity categories. Uh, and, and ordinary categories, I will call one categories, okay? Uh, so if you're not familiar with this concept, then you can keep a, a simple example in mind. Um, we can kind of embed ordinary category theory into index category theory. Let's say, let's say that we have um, category C, then we can define an index category over spaces. Uh, uh, so if, Let's say we have a space gamma, let's say discrete, just to keep it simple. So it's a set, then uh, this category um, will be a category of gamma index families of objects of our category C. So kind of, uh, you kind of can see that we can talk about indexed uh, families indexed by arbitrary sets or arbitrary spaces uh, in this theory. And so we can, for example, say, let's take it's uh, co co limit or limit or something like this, I mean, a product, a product, and uh, do it in elementary way. We, we will see how to do this later in this talk. So we want to kind of formalize this um, setup uh, to do this step theoretically. And um, to do this, um, uh, we need four uh, kind of, kinds of judgments. So the first two correspond to uh, our base uh, category B. So we can actually, uh, uh, again, think of B as just spaces. So it may be as 
rich uh, as you want. So we can add all uh, usually type theoretic uh, constructions here, pi types, universes, invalence, and so on and so on. So this, uh, the, the first level is just ordinary homotopy type theory. We uh, will need any of that actually to develop the general theory. We need to assume that it's only finally complete and that's it. But you can add uh, these structures if you want. Um, so uh, the second level is more interesting. interesting. Um, uh, by the way, I will call this uh, uh, context types in terms base context types in terms, and this ones I will call index types uh, context in terms. So the second level is very simple, actually. Um, index types uh, are not can be can depend on indexed variables. They can depend only on base variables. Everything can depend on base, base variables. But uh, uh, kind of if we forget about this uh, base context, then this will be just very non-dependent kind of type theory. Uh, such type theory is usually called unary type theory, uh, where we have kind of just non-dependent types and uh, also terms are also very restricted. Uh, context can be uh, only exactly of length one, not, not empty, not greater than one, exactly length one. So this uh, kind of theory is just a presentation of theory of categories. So you can think about these types as just objects and terms as morphisms from B to B prime and uh, substitution will give you uh, composition and the only variable is the identity morphism. So this is exactly the categories. Um, and also um, we have substitution, of course, we can substitute uh, base, base terms and base types and terms and index uh, terms and index uh, terms. But also, uh, uh, importantly, we can substitute base terms in, well, what, both here and here. And this operation basically gives us the action of this, uh, gives, gives this, makes this map kind of factorial. So if we have uh, a term in base theory, which just kind of represents morphism, then this term uh, will give us, uh, will act on objects and on uh, morphisms, and this kind of gives us materiality. Um, so that's kind of the basic theory. Um, but uh, there is one problem, is that um, our indexed um, theory, uh, kind of this category, is actually a one category. We don't have any kind of higher structure here. Uh, we kind of can talk about terms, but we don't have any kind of homotopy between terms. Uh, so to fix this, we will consider only locally small um, uh, uh, index type theory. Uh, so uh, this means that we have uh, these constructions. So for every pair of index uh, types, we'll have a base type of uh, maps from A to B. And we have kind of usual uh, rules, which similar to kind of ordinary uh, function types, lambdas and applications and beta rule and eta rule. Uh, so everything looks very familiar, but uh, the only difference is that some types are indexed and some types are base types. Um, so, and this is enough to give us our kind of higher structure because basically home, these base home types are already kind of spaces. So we can talk about homotopies and so on. So for example, if we have a pair of maps, F and G like this, then we can uh, define uh, the type of homotopies between them as just ordinary base city type. Uh, again, we have all the ordinary structure in this base level. So we have identity types, identity types, uh, for identity types and so on. So we have all this kind of structure and we can define usual kind of vertical and uh, horizontal compositions and then satisfy all the associativity and other um, properties. And this proved, this can be proved in the usual way as we just proved this in ordinary hot, the proof is the same. Uh, and we also can define uh, like equivalences, I mean, which type, which maps are equivalences and so on and so on and prove all this uh, usual kind of uh, properties uh, in the same way. So this, looks very much like ordinary hot, but we just need to keep attention to which types are indexed and which are kind of not, but otherwise it's just ordinary hot. 
Uh, so that's kind of the basic uh, theory. Now we can just uh, add more structure to it and see what we can do with this. So we begin with uh, limits and limits. Uh, and we can kind of do this in categorical way. So uh, for example, we can say that uh, some index type is terminal if uh, this home space is contractible for every x. And do only we can say that is initial if this home space is contractible for every x. And we can also define uh, zero types as both, which have both initial and terminal. And uh, here actually, this is interesting because we cannot kind of work with zero types in ordinary hot. Uh, if we have uh, function types, th this will kind of lead to, con to a contradiction. But here we can both have function types, at least in base theory, and zero types, and this work together nicely, there are no problems. Um, we can define also other uh, kinds of uh, finite limits and collimits like pullbacks, pushouts, equalizers, uh, co-equalizers, and so on. Can I ask uh, a quick question? Yes. How do you define contractibility? Uh, well, this is just, uh, again, this is just a base type. So we can define it in the usual way. So the base theory is just ordinary hot. So we have all uh, ordinary concepts like- Okay, so you have apply types in the base. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so now, uh, again, pullbacks defined in kind of obvious way. If we have a pair of maps, then a pullback is an object together with a map and another map and a homotopy and they must satisfy usual universal property that certain uh, space is contractible or whatever. Again, this is just the base, uh, base type, so we can talk about contractibility, pi types, and use all that. So, um, and we can prove all the standard properties of pullbacks, they are unique, and so on, so on. Um, we can prove that we can define other finite limits in terms of these uh, pullbacks and uh, terminal objects. So everything wor works very, as you might expect. Um, and now, um, and also I want to say that uh, uh, this looks very much like category theory, not that much as type theory. So in particular, kind of, if we want to add this structure, we kind of add it axiomatically, right? So we just kind of say that we have this object, this, this, and this, and, and just some very huge axiom or whatever. No computation rules, no nothing. The only computation rules that we saw are what, what, were for home types, but here we don't have any computation rules. Um, we kind of can fix this when we will talk about a dependent version, but uh, for now it doesn't matter, we can add axioms. Um, th this is not a concern for this kind of theory. Um, now, uh, here's something interesting. Now we can actually talk about kind of infinite products and coproducts. So here, uh, let's say we have a family of uh, index types uh, parameterized by some base type i. So i can be an infinite uh, set, for example, natural numbers or real numbers or whatever. It can be a finite set, for example. And then we can actually prove that if i is a bool, two element set, then this will give just a product, which you can set with product defined as previously, a special case of two bugs. Uh, and, uh, but we can also talk about infinite products. And the rules are kind of uh, obvious categorical rules. Uh, so we have projections uh, from this uh, product to uh, our types VI, and kind of this universal map from uh, an arbitrary type P to this product if you have all these maps. And uh, uh, the, the uh, properties are promote it as just homotopies like this. Uh, so this kind of beta rule, and this kind of theta rule, and this will imply that, uh, that it is indeed a product that will satisfy all the rules we need. Now, uh, this one we can actually ma make look more type theoretic uh, and um, define another kind of version of products. The formation rule for, for the type is the same, but uh, other rules are different. Here we have introduction, which is kind of ordinary lambda, and application, which is kind of 
ordinary application, but the difference is that, again, some types are base types and some types are index types. Uh, and we have, can actually have some computational rules. Uh, so this one is kind of a strict version of the previous one. And actually, if we replace this computational rule with, with homotopies, then we can uh, show that this one is equivalent to the previous one. We can uh, uh, construct these products uh, out of the previous ones and vice versa, uh, if you have homotopies here. But with computational rules, this is a strict version of it, those products. Um, uh, we can define uh, coproducts kind of dually to the first definition. Uh, again, nothing interesting, just again, a coproduct of family of types. We have injections, we have this again, universal map and homotopies. Um, can we define kind of a type theoretic version of this, uh, of coproducts? Well, no, because we need actually dependent types to um, kind of to make uh, the state to state the uh, improve the uniqueness kind of part or, or contractibility part or whatever. So without dependent types, we kind of cannot uh, have a, a type theoretic version of this construction. Um, but uh, later we will define one. Um, so a special case of uh, coproducts uh, are co-powers. If um, our family is a constant family, so if A does not depend on X, then we'll get uh, co-powers. So coproducts are like uh, sigma types, right? So a special case of sigma types are products. So this is again a kind of product, but one of the types is index type and another one a base type. So we can kind of multiply them and get an index type. So this is an interesting operation. It, will, it satisfies various nice properties. We can prove all of that. Um, so if multiply by empty type, we'll get initial object. If multiply by base uh, push out, we'll get push out in index uh, level. If multiply by contractible type, we'll get X. If multiply by sigma type, this ordinary sigma type in the base theory, then we'll get, we'll get coproduct. Uh, actually, uh, this is suspension. Again, in the base theory, if you multiply by a terminal object, then we'll get suspension. In particular, this implies that uh, uh, we can kind of, uh, that uh, this function multiplied by one maps uh, base spheres to spheres. So this actual function multiplied by one, by one is actually, um, uh, kind of embeds our base types in uh, index types. Not necessarily embeds, but kind of just a map and it preserves various elements, so it's a nice map. Um, so here's, so these are some examples of constructions that we can do and some kind of properties we can prove. Uh, let's look at um, examples of kind of models of uh, this theory. So what are the applications, right? Well. The first example is not very interesting, uh, kind of, it just um, basically shows that uh, this theory is kind of uh, weaker than ordinary uh, homotopy type theory. So, so basically, we can just take any kind of proof in our theory uh, and just uh, take this uh, judgments uh, where we have this kind of pipeline and replace this pipe with a comma, and then we get ordinary judgment in ordinary homotopy type theory. So this kind of shows that uh, everything we can do in uh, index type theory is also true in ordinary type theory. Uh, so unless we assume some something like uh, zero types or something which will lead to a contradiction. But otherwise, uh, it's it just kind of, kind of a generalization of ordinary homotopy type theory. So to put differently, we can prove strictly less than we can prove in ordinary homotopy type theory. But of course, this means that you have more models. Um, so uh, one model is um, uh, quasi-categories. So this is an interesting example because, um, uh, because this category is not locally Cartesian closed. So we can kind of use pi types, uh, but it's Cartesian closed. So we can use uh, pi types when the domain is closed. Uh, and uh, for ordinary type homotopy type theory, this will be kind of a problem, but here we can actually formulate this kind of uh, structure and work with it uh, 
very nicely. There are no problems at all. Um, so um, I don't think that I have time to talk about the construction of this model actually, but uh, just uh, briefly can describe what's going on. So the most important part is that uh, we kind of um, need uh, uh, need to work with kind of uh, kind of complexes, but which might not be uh, quasi categories. So we can define uh, uh, a notion of a kind of superficial set uh, in which all uh, edges are invertible. So this kind of kind of complex minus uh, weak kind of complex uh, condition, and it actually uh, uh, they actually have many nice properties that kind of complex have. For example, uh, every uh, every Categorical fibration uh, in which the domain satisfies this property is a Cartesian fibration. In particular, it is uh, uh, exponential. So this can be used to show that uh, this model is actually Cartesian closed. And so it also has various nice other properties, but I won't talk about this because I don't have time. So another kind of uh, model is pre-shifts. So if I have a model for base theory, nice enough, and some just arbitrary uh, uh, small category J, then I can consider, uh, I can make this category into a model of index type theory in which the base theory is modeled by C. So for example, if C is special sets and J uh, is uh, delta op, then we get a model in which base types again spaces and um, and index types are simplicial spaces. And we can also consider various localizations of that. So for example, we can uh, consider only uh, simplicial spaces satisfying Seagull condition or REST condition. And so we'll get again the same model, but a different presentation. Um, and uh, another kind of interesting example is mm, pointed types. So I already uh, talked about zero types. So kind of uh, uh, simplest uh, example of, um, or the most natural example of a category with a zero object is uh, a category of pointed types, or pointed uh, spaces. Uh, so we can actually kind of um, uh, accentize this uh, category completely. So what do I mean? Um, uh, let's just um, take our index step theory at a zero type and also let's add a, a type uh, which we call just S0. Then we can actually see that um, we have kind of a functor from index types to base types. Uh, uh, defined like this. So A is an index type and then we get a base type. And this base type is actually pointed because we have this canonical uh, map here. And it is indeed functorial. So uh, if you have a map of index, index types, then we get a map uh, of these base types defined just by post composition. Right? And it will also preserve the base point. So it's actually a map of uh, point types. So we have this function and we just can require this function to be an equivalence. So by doing this, we kind of make uh, index types a full subcategory of pointed base types. And we also can require it to be subjective on objects just by uh, adding an index type for every pointed base type and an equivalence between this uh, pointed equivalence between these pointed types. And so this, this kind of makes the index level equivalent to just uh, pointed types in base category. So this means that our theory is kind of complete with respect to uh, this model. So it's kind of have a unique model. If we fix the base uh, model for the base theory, then uh, it will have unique model. By the way, I can kind of prove this. I, well, I didn't try, but uh, I suppose that it is indeed form, formally true. But at least 
in some informal sense, this is kind of clear, right? Um, so another example of a, a complete uh, theory is spectrum. This is again kind of uh, example uh, which doesn't work in uh, ordinary hot because it, it, at least it has uh, zero types uh, and also it is stable. So what does this mean? Uh, this means that uh, we have uh, shouts and pullbacks and zero types and also these canonical maps are equivalences. So this is suspension, this is loop space um, and we have canonical maps like this and we uh, add axioms that they are equivalences. Uh, such theory is called stable and if we have a stable theory and some index type uh, S, we can actually define a functor from index types to spectra in base theory. So it's uh, defined like this. Uh, so A is index type, N is a natural number uh, in base theory. Uh, and then this is uh, base type and we can show that we have uh, these maps that we must have. And it is actually an omega spe spectrum uh, because, uh, well, uh, let's just prove this. Uh, we have this uh, space, then we can show that how spaces actually uh, preserve limits as usual. This can be proved very easily. Uh, so in particular, they preserve uh, omega uh, functor. And then, um, uh, by uh, stability, uh, this um, space is equivalent to this one because we can kind of reduce uh, omega and one sigma and then we get this space. Um, so, and also we can show that every map of index types uh, will give us a map of spectra. So, and then again, we can make this theory complete just by requiring this map to be an equivalence uh, from uh, like, like previously, and again, adding selectivity conditional objects. Um, so we'll get kind of a complete theory of spectra. Uh, now, an interesting uh, question is, uh, can we make, uh, oh yeah, so basically uh, this was actually one of the motivations for developing this whole theory, is um, uh, doing kind of synthetic higher category theory. So there's a paper by Leon Schumann, which kind of define a certain type theory for doing this. But uh, first of all, they kind of uh, work with uh, simplicial spaces, not directly with infi uh, infinite category of categories, because they kind of work in ordinary hot, and uh, so they assume that we have phi types and all that. So we can kind of directly work with infinite categories. Uh, but in this theory, that's not a problem. We can do that. So um, uh, to, to, do, to do this, we can just add uh, some type index type dot one with two terms, uh, kind of left, right endpoint, whatever. So this kind of direct uh, interval, and then we can add axioms that all index types are single types or complete single types, uh, and add various uh, constructions like uh, Cartesian closedness, right? So, so basically function types for closed uh, types. Um, and uh, also, uh, importantly, uh, the theory of Rion Schumann has another, another kind of problem is that it seems that we can define actually cores of uh, categories. So if we have kind of infinity category, then core is just infinity report. Uh, of notable maps there. And it seems that we can't really define it in this theory. And uh, we actually did for various reasons, but here it's not a problem because uh, basically we have it by definition, we have these home uh, spaces. In particular, if we consider home space from terminal uh, object to uh, given object A, then this will give us this core. Right, so that's not a problem at all. Um, so interesting question is, can we make this theory complete in the same sense we made uh, pointed types and spectra complete? And uh, I don't know an answer to this question. Uh, the problem is that uh, we kind of need to define, uh, so here we define kind of 
uh, maps of pointed types and we can define maps of spectra. Uh, that's not a problem, but can we define kind of maps of uh, infinity categories in the same way? Um, I don't know, it seems that it has the same kind of, you know, coherence problems. So, um, it's not clear to me. And I, I think that this is an important question because uh, basically if, if this theory is not complete, uh, then the question is, well, this means that there are th some things that we cannot prove in this synthetic higher category theory, right? Uh, uh, so what are those things? Uh, I mean, if, if it's not complete, then this means that uh, some, something is missing, right? But what is missing? And another interesting kind of thing is that if uh, we have, uh, if we can work with categories synthetically, then we can actually define them also analytically. Uh, because basically they, they are just kind of uh, algebraic structures and as soon as we have kind of these synthetic categories, we can work with algebraic structures finally. I mean, higher algebraic structures and can define them as usually as kind of uh, complete, uh, complete single spaces as usual. Uh, but then the question is, is this analytical theory is equivalent to synthetic theory? And again, if it's not complete, then probably no. And then we can kind of work in this theory both, both synthetically and analytically and get two different theories and one of them is not complete and the other one is also not clear if it's complete or not because it's kind of based on non-complete theory. So uh, there are a lot of questions. And I think that we can actually try to solve them by just doing this uh, synthetic higher category theory and can kind of try to see what we can do and what we can. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the kind of applications. Um, let's uh, move to the next part then. So I talked about this unary version and uh, uh, as I said, it's kind of feels like doing category theory more than type theory or actually as a mix of two of them because uh, basically we have kind of category theory on the index level and type theory on the base level. So we kind of also a nice uh, way of thinking about this is that we kind of doing category theory, indexed, um, enriched category theory, but enriched in types, not in some sets, spaces, or some objects, but in types. So kind of a nice mix of category theory and type theory. But we can make it even more type theoretic by considering a dependent version of index uh, type theory. So what are the rules? Well, the first, uh, uh, two judgments are again the same, and again we can have all ordinary everything is the same as before. But uh, these two judgments are uh, different. So those are kind of judgments of uh, ordinary dependent depend type type theory. So we can have index types which depend on uh, index variables, and uh, again index types depend on index variables. Uh, uh, we can add um, usual identity types, sigma types, and union types to this uh, index level, uh, which formulated in the usual way. The only difference is that there will be always this gamma, but it won't uh, interact with the rules in any way. Uh, and we, if we do that, then we need to add a certain rule, which we call home extensionality. Uh, so what is this rule? Uh, well, uh, it just, uh, uh, such that certain map uh, canonical is in equivalence. So what uh, is this map? Well, uh, one way uh, of uh, think, thinking about this is that we kind of have now two different highest structures on our index level. One is given by home types and the other is given by identity types. And we kind of need to uh, say that uh, they actually give us the same highest structure. Or another way of thinking about this is that uh, identity types and sigma types should give us kind of finite limits, right? So we kind of need to add an axiom which says that they indeed give us kind of equalizer or whatever. So this is precisely this axiom. So uh, 
let's look at uh, this type. Here we have an index type. Uh, and uh, so this sigma type and a bit type in index level. And we have uh, the usual kind of projection on the first uh, coordinate. Uh, and uh, we can consider uh, the base type of sections of this map, right? Uh, so, and uh, th this is the base type of section of this sections of this map. And uh, then we get a function from this type, from this base type to this base type, defined by usual transport because uh, this is just usual stuff, no. Uh, and then we require this map to be in equivalence. So, um, uh, if you look at this type, uh, these sections, then you can actually see that it looks very much like uh, kind of dependent uh, function types. So, uh, if these are ordinary kind of types, then uh, sections of these sigma types are precisely dependent functions from A to uh, this type. So, but the problem is that uh, these are not ordinary functions, these are kind of home types. And we can actually define a dependent version of home types now. Uh, and if we add those, then uh, we can actually formulate this in more nicely just by saying that this is uh, this dependent home type from X in A to this identity type. But if we don't have them, then uh, we can work with them like this. It doesn't matter, they are equivalent. Um, so, and if we uh, define in this dependent, kind of uh, way, then you can see that this uh, indeed looks like uh, just function extensionality, but for home types. Here we have uh, homotopy between F and G, and here we have kind of home uh, X and A, and it, it, here are the entities. So this is precisely kind of uh, extensionality functional. Can I quickly ask a question? Uh -huh. uh, how is sec defined? Is it just a type, type of sections. So it's a pair of maps from A to this sigma type together with homotopy between uh, composition of this map and P1 and identity. So this is the usual type uh, of sections of a map. Okay. Um, now let's, uh, let's talk about finite limits and finite limits. So again, as I said, uh, we have sigma types and digit types. So in particular, this means that we already automatically have finite limits in the sense we defined before. And they can be defined using these sigma types and data types in the usual way. So this is kind of the pullback of two maps and we have projections and homotopy and we can show that it satisfies the universal property. Uh, the unit type gives us terminal uh, type and um, uh, we can define uh, kind of pushouts and empty types in the usual type theoretic way and show that they satisfy uh, the required universal property properties uh, for shells and uh, uh, initial objects. Um, but there is one catch uh, uh, that I need to talk about. Uh, but uh, uh, I'll talk about this later. For now, uh, let's uh, actually consider a dependent version of products. This actually looks very much like uh, the strict version of products that we talked about. The only difference is that now the context here is not empty because it must be empty in unary version, but here we can actually take an arbitrary context. And uh, this one is actually not really a product from categorical perspective. It's actually a white pullback because now we're taking product in, uh, in the over category. So uh, this is what what's called the white pullback. Uh, but since we have a kind of already have finite limits, that's not a problem. With, so, I mean that uh, this kind of products can be derived from the previous ones. Well, at least uh, the weak version. Of course, if we have um, these computational rules, then that is, this is again kind of a stricter version and can be derived from the previous ones. Um, and now finally, we can define uh, coproducts, I mean, the, those uh, infinite coproducts uh, in a uh, type theoretic way. So this is kind of very uh, straightforward. It looks very much like um, sigma types, I guess, but uh, with the eliminator instead of projections. Um, 
uh, but uh, there is a catch, uh, the same one that I talked about, uh, that I mentioned before. So and the catch is that uh, this gives us actually stable depend, uh, coproducts, stable on the pullbacks, I mean. Uh, and that's kind of a problem because if we, uh, for example, want to uh, work in, again, take the example of um, quasi categories. Uh, coproducts are actually stable there, so we can actually interpret th these rules uh, in this uh, this model. But uh, pushouts are not stable there, so we cannot have uh, kind of usually usual uh, definition of pushouts. So we need to kind of modify it to get non stable uh, version. And uh, so non stable version actually looks very much like the stable version. The only difference is that. Uh, now these uh, types must be closed, so they cannot depend on um, on uh, uh, indexed variables. They can depend only on base variables. And another thing is here in Eliminator, the type in which we eliminate also can depend on um, indexed variables. The only variable that can depend on is the one which we are eliminating. Um, and uh, uh, the rules for non-stable uh, pushouts can be defined in the same way, so I won't talk about this. Uh, but um, actually, this is an interesting example. I mentioned at the very beginning that uh, if we work in, in kind of very weak homotopy type theory where we have only uh, only identity types and sigma types, then we kind of can work in it, but uh, there are certain problems. So uh, we can... Uh, so let's talk about these problems. Uh, if we try to kind of add uh, non-stable products or pushouts to this uh, theory in the same way, we kind of can do this. So just forget about gamma and, uh, 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 well, we need to consider pushouts because infinite coproducts don't make sense there, but uh, they're also the same. So uh, basically the idea is that, again, we can consider eliminator and which will be restricted to uh, this eliminated type, we can eliminate only, uh, can depend only on this variable. So, and the problem here is that we, can do, we cannot kind of prove uh, the universal property. So let's say that we have a pair of maps, F and G, uh, from the push out to some other type, and we want to prove that they are equal uh, if they satisfy some conditions. To do this, uh, we just uh, take D to be the type of the type FZ equals to JZ. And uh, we kind of can do this, but uh, the question is what are F and G? If there's just some fixed functions, then this works. But if we want to put this for arbitrary function functions, then this won't work because they need to be in this in the context. And context must be empty except for this variable. So we, we kind of can prove this only for fixed uh, functions, but not for arbitrary functions. And here it's not a problem because, uh, yeah, uh, another way to think about this is that uh, we kind of can prove this only on a meta level, sort of, because if we can prove this for arbitrary, we, we can prove this for arbitrary, but in meta sense. So I can say for all F and G, I can prove this, this is true, but this for all is a meta for all. Such in this theory, it's kind of on a meta level. But here, I can actually prove this for arbitrary f and g, but they will be just uh, elements of form type and will live in this context. So you can think about this context as a kind of meta context uh, with respect to this index level. So this is kind of another way of thinking about this whole theory, that uh, this is kind of a meta context. Uh, so let's... Um, let's move on. Uh, another kind of, um, it's not really, um, well, yeah, so, so sort of example is cohesive type theory. Um, so there's a, a paper by Mike Schumann about, uh, which defines certain type theory that kind of uh, formalizes uh, cohesive toposes. Um, so, uh, and again, this can be seen as a special case of this of 
index type theorist because basically his topos is uh, topos together with um, uh, Fanta to uh, uh, some base topos uh, of spaces usually and uh, the bunch of other Fantas. And we can actually formalize this in index type theory just by saying that, uh, well, basically index categories can be represented as authentic vibrations. So this will, uh, oh no, sorry, forget about that. Uh, uh, well, I'm then out of time. So um, um, basically uh, we can uh, uh, kind of work with cohesive topuses in this theory also. Uh, and in cohesive topuses we have kind of uh, various functors and uh, most importantly the kind of left joint of this forgetful functor is kind of the most difficult one. Uh, it, it is handled by our theory. It just uh, literally uh, the, the, the functor that I, I talked about before multiplied by one. So it's literally left a joint and we can just work with it in this theory, isn't it? So, okay. Um, and another uh, interesting kind of example is that we can consider another version of uh, index type theories where the index level is not unary, is not dependent, but actually linear. Because for example, if you take examples of pointed types in spectra, then these categories are actually monoidal. And so it seems more natural to take a linear version of type theory as an uh, index level. Um, so we can do that and then we can add various uh, nice kind of monoidal operations uh, like uh, smash pro uh, uh, products and uh, internal home um, types. Um, and wedge, uh, wedge sums and uh, stuff like that. Um, and actually this will be, um, there are various linear dependent type theories in the liter literature and uh, this is one actually of the approaches. I mean, I think that it's literally one of um, such theories defined one in one of the papers probably. Um, so this kind of, also shows that this index step theory is generalization of uh, also linear dependent type theory and cohesive type theory and I guess various other type theories. Um, so now finally let's talk about a uh, certain interesting example and I really want to talk about this because it kind of shows what we can do in this theory. Um, this is um, so uh, um, one of the kind of um, major the theorems that we can prove in index uh, category theory is a joint functor theorem. Uh, it's interesting because it usually uh, ordinary joint functor theorem uses um, many kind of uh, non-elementary constructions like limits and uh, well. Uh, limits and and the so I guess uh, so uh, and but we can uh, talk about uh, arbitrary limits so we can actually prove this adjoint theorem in index categories so can we do this in index type theory and the answer is no because we cannot really talk about functors here uh, for the same re reason we can really talk about uh, functors in ordinary hot we kind of work within a single model. Uh, but we can prove a special case of this theorem is uh, the initial object theorem. It's not that special because uh, usually the way the joint functor theorem is proved is that we first prove this theorem, uh, the initial object one, and then derive the general case by applying it to certain common category because the left joint functor is initial object in this common category. So we prove this initial object theorem. And the theorem can be formulated here as follows. If the base theory has natural numbers and the index theory has small limits, this means that it has uh, finite limits as we defined, so pullbacks, external objects, and small coproducts. So well, I just called them coproducts before. Uh, and also, if it has any weakly initial family of index types, I will say what, what's that later uh, in a minute, uh, then it has actually initial index type. So, um, 
Uh, so a weakly initial family of, of uh, objects or types is just kind of a family of index types parameterized by a base type, uh, such that for every other type, we have a map from one of the these uh, types in this family. So we can actually immediately take the product of this family and get a single weakly initial, uh, weakly initial uh, type. So it's just a type which has a map uh, to any other uh, index type, which might not be unique. Uh, so we need to construct a initial object uh, from this one. Uh, so let's just look at uh, the proof for ordinary categories. We can actually lo look either at this proof or at the proof for infinity categories, but I cannot kind of uh, adapt the proof for infinity categories because it, uh, it is kind of specific for specific model of quasi categories and you know, it uses a lot of synthesis and it's not clear if it can be kind of adapted. But uh, we can actually take proof for ordinary one categories and it will almost work. Uh, so here's the proof. Um, so uh, let's take our initial object and take equalizers of all at the maps on W. Uh, and then we get uh, some object Z, uh, which will prove is uh, initial. Uh, so it's still weakly initial because it has a map to W. And to prove that it is initial, consider a pair of maps like this. Uh, then we can take equalizer of this uh, equalizer of this pair of maps, and then we can take some map uh, from W to this equalizer E, any map at all. Uh, then we get uh, some map which we call R. We have R here, E here, and then we can consider the uh, composite. And since E is equal is an equalizer, it um, well. It, we know that E R E equals to E, and since E is a mono because it's, it's an equalizer, then we can kind of reduce and then get that E R is identity. And now, since this map is equalizer of these two maps, this means that this long map is also equalizes these maps, but this long map is identity, as I just showed. So these maps are equal. Now, can we use this proof? Uh, uh, for infinity categories? And the answer is no. And the only problem is, is here that we use that E is mono because equalizers in infinity categories are not monos in general. So this won't work. Uh, but we kind of can fix this. So to fix this, um, uh, basically the idea is that even though uh, this map ER is not identity, it's still at important. Well, Kind of. We know that E R E equals to E, so E R E R equals to E R. So it is kind of independent. There is a problem here, but uh, we can kind of uh, forget about this for a moment. And uh, we also need to assume that our dependents split. Uh, and if they are, then we can finish the proof. Basically, uh, I don't have time for this, but the idea is that. Uh, we split this independent ER, we get a pair of maps P and Q, and we can show that not Z, but actually this zero object is uh, initial. Uh, this works like this. Uh, so uh, we get the same kind of diagram, but now uh, basically um, we still know that this kind of long map equalizes this pair of maps, but now this long map is actually equals to identity because uh, this one factors as uh, like this, and uh, the composite of this pair of maps is identity uh, because it, they kind of split our dependence. So this identity, this identity, so we, get, we can finish this proof. That's not the important part. The important part is the next two steps. Um, I don't have much time left, but uh, these steps are actually very interesting, I think. So uh, the, the first uh, thing that we missed is that uh, we kind of assumed that uh, our dependence split. So uh, we can actually, this is an interesting problem because uh, basically we can uh, prove this in ordinary infinity category theory, a theorem that uh, all the dependence split if our category has countable limits or co limits. Uh, there's a proof in HOT which kind of uses an internal version of this construction uh, or of these assumptions. Uh, 
that was proven by Schumann. And uh, we cannot really use this kind of infinity categorical argument because again, it uses some synthesis and stuff like that. But we can actually take Schumann's argument, take, but use not the internal version of this subset, but again, the external ones, because we can again talk about countable limits in this index type theory. But even though we use kind of external version of these assumptions, but the argument is literally the same because we use literally the same kind of type theory. We just need to pay attention to which types are indexed and which are base types, but the proof is literally the same, but assumptions are different. The external version of these internal assumptions. So I think that this is, this shows uh, that we can um, uh, kind of work with uh, external notions in the same way we work with the internal ones in very type theoretic way, which is really, really nice. And uh, the final problem is also, I think, very interesting, is that I said that uh, our map was an important, but this is not really true because in infinity category theory, map to be independent, this means that we should have not only um, this homotopy, but also certain coherence uh, kind of homotopy here. And this is not true for the map uh, I was talking uh, before, uh, but we can actually fix this. So uh, the idea is that this object Z that we defined before, um, I remind that, you know, that we defined it as an equalizer of all um, at the maps. So this can be written in index type theory like this. So basically we kind of define it in such a way that kind of this map that we get will be um, at important in the weak sense. So we'll get this homotopy, but we can get the additional homotopy just because that is kind of too weak. But we can fix this if we just add more stuff to that. So uh, we add not only this kind of uh, homotopies, but also another level of homotopies here, which will actually give us this additional homotopy that we need. And I think that this is kind of construction is uh, interesting because if we try to do this in kind of ordinary infinity category theory using quasi categories, I think that this construction will be much more difficult to kind of describe and to support even because here I can just write it in a single line, but there it will be just a mess of kind of limit pullbacks and whatever uh, synthesis. So I think that this shows that uh, this theory can be really used to reason in more intuitive way about infinity categories. So that's about it. <laughs> Great, thank you very much for a nice talk. So we will all do our usual silent applause, visual applause for those who have their cameras on. Okay, and uh, now I open the floor to questions. If you have a question, please just unmute your mic and ask. I will get the ball rolling. Um, any chance you're going to implement something like this, maybe in Arend or, or something like well, that? Well, uh, actually, I, I think that uh, since the kind of many various version of this, uh, we can implement like all of them. I mean, we need to implement each of them separ separately. And I think that at least we should implement the linear version one because it will kind of simplify many arguments using pointer types and spectra. And also I think that we should implement the uh, synthetic uh, category theory one because uh, as I said, it can be kind of used to do category theory, infinite category theory synthetically. But uh, for now, no, we didn't implement any of that, but certainly I want to do this. Hi, I've got a question. Mm -hmm. um, when you have an argument in your index type theory, for example, the spectra one, is there a way to kind of bring that argument back into an internal whole argument? Or is it? Uh, uh, let's see. Um, well, uh, the problem is that uh, kind of when we uh, doing this kind of stuff, uh, 
it is actually uh, more strict than uh, ordinary kind of spectra. So for example, uh, we have a kind of maps of spectra, right? And we have composition on them and it, uh, the composition is strictly associative. Uh, so, so, and also various other constructions will give us something that is more strict than ordinary kind of uh, spectra. So in principle, yes, this should be uh, possible if we kind of apply some kind of strictification theorem or whatever, but uh, I didn't prove any of that. But in principle, yes, probably, but not currently because I don't know, know how to do this yet. Okay, more questions? Uh, so this is going back a bit, but um, we, you were describing the quasi category, the quasi categories model of the indexed uh, type theory. I think it, I took that to mean the non-dependent version. Um, yes, exactly. So um, I was wondering, um, one of the four judgments that you introduced was the one where you have a context gamma, and then uh, you had sort of the index type in context gamma. Uh, I guess I'm wondering where the data of both the E and the B come from here. I, I would have thought uh, that that would be interpreted something more as uh, some sort of vibration over a base con complex. Yeah, so well, first of all, I want to mention that this model is actually models even dependent version, so that's not a problem. Uh, second of all, uh, so yeah, uh, in principle, uh, the idea is that kind of uh, base types um, uh, interpreted or base context are interpreted as con complexes, and we kind of should be able to interpret uh, indexed uh, types as just categorical vibrations over them. But then we'll have kind of um, coherence problems that, that we get for ordinary type theory. So there are various ways to solve this, but I use a particular kind of solution, which is called uh, uh, local universes model, and it will just kind of uh, instead of considering uh, the vibrations directly over gamma, it just takes a vibration over just some arbitrary vibration and a map from gamma to the base of this vibration so that we can pull back to gamma and get a vibration over gamma. But the point is that uh, if we just take this pair of maps, then we can kind of, the substitution uh, will be strictly associative because it's just a composition of maps and not, uh, but if we just take it literally, it won't work. So basically, this is the not, like a um, standard construction, sort of, to solve the coherence problems. Great. Thanks for explaining that. Okay. Are there more questions? Okay. Well, if not, let's uh, thank the speaker again. And our next talk will be David Jazz Myers at noon Eastern, which is 25 minutes from now. And I'm stopping the recording.